down in a hole and they've put all the stones in their place. I've eaten the sun so my tongue has been burned of the taste. I have been guilty of kicking myself in the teeth. I will speak no more of my feelings beneath. This is the Community Solutions Podcast. Jason Bradley and Director Deep from our underground layer in an undisclosed location where we are taking it to the streets and we're beating down every ounce of Marxism that this (laughs) state wants to dish out. What's happening? Are we winning at that? I don't know if we're winning at that. Well, here and there. Okay. Yeah. Jay, I might know the answer to that. Ooh, two weeks in a row. Yeah, it's possible. Um, If it's who I'm thinking of. I have to say, I was never a fan. It's banned, right? Yeah. Okay, that's a quarter of a point. No. Um, I was never a fan. Of, you remember MTV used to do something called Unplugged? It's not the monkeys. No, I know okay. it's not the monkeys. They're the Beatles. Same, same thing. <laughs> the only difference is when the guy puts a stocking hat on. Right. Um, I, I admit, I, I remember something called Unplugged back like in the 90s yeah. on MTV. Okay. I was never a fan of this band. Until I saw them unplugged. Sometimes when you see a band live, they yeah. sound crappier than yeah. they do, you know? Okay. Well, I mean, you know, they, R- right. when you're in the studio, yeah. you can correct everything and blah, right. blah, blah. But I actually, I actually became a fan. I want to say it was somewhere around 95 or 6. Um, I think Beavis and Butthead was still going on. Uh-huh. And so... Um, an MTV, and I saw them unplugged, and I thought they were excellent. It yeah. would be Alice in Chains. Yes, down in a hole, Alice in Chains. There we go. Chains. That's two. That's two. That is. That's, Congratulations. Uh, that's between that's... one and three, right? Yeah. yeah okay. Absolutely. Like Rocky, you know, these numbers right. almost add up to nine. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but I did see them there, and uh, uh, I became a fan of that band after that. Uh-huh. So I got to see them at Lollapalooza when they were here. Uh, really? With, uh, what that was the third year, I think, with Primus and. Uh, uh, who else? What year would that be the in the nineties? Put out their first album. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it would have been like ninety three. Oh, okay. You remember something called Edge Fest? Yeah. Back when ninety three seven was like the big alternative station, and yeah, I remember I tried to get it in from Duluth, and it was it would sound kind of like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and but I there remember points. There was a time. Well, I remember when 100.3 was a rock station because they had Howard Stern on in the morning, and I used to listen to Howard on my way to North Hennepin Community College every yeah. day. It was the, so there was, but they all kind of played different things. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you had more classic rock like on KQ. You had more uh, alternative music on 93. I mean, it was it was all kind of different different stuff. Right. So. Okay. Well, Jay. Uh, I'm sure I won't get three in a row. That'll be a miracle. I'm like the Timberwolves. I don't. I don't. I don't do stuff like that. By the way, I just just yes. just to let the audience know here. I just played three scratch off tickets. Okay, I went to the dentist today. Yes, a few hours ago. It wasn't as bad as I thought. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. And I remember I bought some lottery tickets before I went, thinking, okay, if I win a bunch of money, it ought to be a good appointment. Right. I will lose a bunch of money. I'm scared to death. Well, of course, I <laughs> lost my arse. Uh, then I went and bought some more, and I got, I won like, I, I don't know, 30 bucks on 10 bucks or something. Then I just, really? I just blew that while, while we were sitting here <laughs> on this Viking game. I won 75 bucks on this game one time, and I just can't stop playing it. Um, just think, Jay, I was just thinking, right at this table, I did more gambling than you've ever done in your life. Yes. I mean, you're deprived, Jay. You're just deprived. I'm frugal. I mean, well, I'm fr- I'm frugal too, but I mean, you know, I have fun, you know, every other year or something uh, like I that. I have fun. Uh, I pick up my guitar every day. Yeah, you. And I, well, I'm gambling and I'm stimulating the economy. You're at home with your Walkman listening to your rock set tapes. Okay, so don't tell me, don't tell me what you're doing is fun. Okay. Okay. <laughs> rock set. They got to be worn out by now, man. It ain't no joyride anymore. All right. <laughs> Jay, I want to say a couple things. Yeah. First off, I want to acknowledge something. We we went off on a tangent so much last week, we forgot to do two things. Okay. Actually, three now. One, congratulate our local friends who won 
on election night. Absolutely. Uh, Nancy LaRoche and Jim Adams have been on the program. Yes, they have. Nate Truesdale, who was on yeah. the program in September. Mm-hmm. Uh, he and Ryan Sabus, who are friends of ours, uh, won as well. Yeah. Uh, our crew up at Big Lake. Yep, Deborah Musgrove. Yes, uh, in, in Ramsey. Uh, Ramsey. Um, so, congratulations. We we yeah. <laughs> ran out of time blowing a gasket last week. That we, <laughs> we didn't say that. Oh, we're not much better mood this week. No, so. we're not. That's good we get that out of the way now. We're not. Some sad entertainment news. Yes. Alex Trebek passing away last week. Mm-hmm. Are you a Jeopardy fan? Did you ever watch, you watch Jeopardy a lot? Sometimes. Yeah, I, you know, I, I remember um, I was a game show fan as a kid for some reason. Yeah. I remember watching The Price is Right. I remember Bob Barker's hair when it was dark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, I mean, <laughs> Wheel of Fortune was always... Yeah. Don't press your luck. Yeah. Uh, Tic-tac-dough. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, $10,000 pyramid. Chuck Woolery hosted a show, uh, Scrabble. I remember that used to be on... Oh. Um, I would watch a couple of game shows in the morning before going out to play. Yeah. You know, during the day, and mm-hmm. my mom would kick me out of the house by like 10 a.m. I had right. to go outside. Uh, there was no TV watching, and there was like one TV in the house yeah. back then. Um, so, 80 years old, and he was having wow. fourth stage cancer, and he was still hosting Jeopardy. Yeah, up through late August. Right? I, I, unbelievable, something like that. That's yeah. incredible to me, and I just yeah. uh, something. And I know he did a game show before that, uh, which I don't remember. I mean, obviously, I don't yeah. remember. I mean, Jeopardy's been on since the 80s, so. Uh, unfortunately, mm-hmm. Mr. Trebek losing his battle with cancer. Also, Sir Sean Connery passing I away saw that. on Halloween. Um, now, I, I, you and I are too young to remember him as James Bond. Um, but I've seen, I've seen them. I've, Dr. I've, no and yeah. Goldfinger from Russia with Brother Love. Yeah, we've yeah. seen those. <laughs> um, and I... I I got into Bond movies later when uh, when uh, Pierce uh, Branson or whatever his name is mm-hmm. is the it was Bond. I like Dan Craig too. I do like those movies. Um, what is your favorite Sean Connery movie? However, now now first off, everybody's tried to do a Sean Connery impersonation. Do yeah. you do a Sean Connery? No, impersonation? I'm not going to. Yeah, my, my, oh, where, my, where's the vows? Yeah, you don't my, do a my Sean Scottish Con- ends up being more like Mel Gibson Braveheart or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> I'm going to give you some questions. If I don't like your answers, you're going out the window. Come on, you can do that. Uh, that's just pretty good. <laughs> that was pretty good. What do you you have a particular one? Oh, he goodness. was only in like 300. And right. Then, yeah. Well, the, yeah. I I don't think I have a favorite. I I love him as an actor, and I think, you know, he, uh, he had he a terrific. lot of really good movies. And, I got to say Red October probably yeah. comes because I love Tom Clancy. Yeah. And that was good. Only Sean Connery could get away playing a Russian Navy captain in a Scottish accent. I don't know who else could get away <laughs> well, with that. Well, there is that. And, and <laughs> Sam Neill doesn't quite no. surpass for me as a oh. he's a great actor from Jurassic Park and a few right. others, you know. But uh my mom and my mom loved Sean Connery mm-hmm. and loved Michelle Pfeiffer. And there was a movie called Russia House that I remember she there was a it was based on some book she read and it was just, oh, that was the greatest thing out there. I tell you what, I liked him in uh uh God, the last he played Harrison Ford's father in the last uh Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones The yeah, Last the Ride or something? Skull or Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. Was it? Yeah. I thought it was The Last Ride or something. Uh, I don't think so. Or The Last Crusade. Crusade, that's it. That, that one. He was really good in that yeah. a, the supporting role, I thought. I thought he nailed that part yeah. very well. I mean, you know, and, and then there was, uh, uh, God, no. Oh. There was The Rock, where he, yes. he was with uh, Nicholas Cage. Cage. Yeah. How, uh, you know, and, and, and there was who, uh, with that Y2K. Who, who's Michael Douglas's wife? What's her name? I don't know. He, uh, what the hell's that movie? It was about the uh, Y2K. Entrapment. Oh, That was yeah. one of his last ones. Yeah, yeah that was He was, was good. terrific in yeah. that movie, and he was like 70 years. I didn't realize he was 90. What? Yeah. No, of course, well, old? the Bond movies he was in were all in the 60s. Yeah, so I suppose. I, yeah, it was. Then he came back mm. uh, to do one Never Say Never Again or something in like after Roger Moore was Bond, and then oh, yeah. Connery did one more. In like the early '80s, mm. but I didn't realize he was like 50 in that movie. Wow! So, yeah, so 
a long storied career of Sean Connery, and uh, I, he hadn't been in a movie in a long time. I know he kind of retired and checked out to yeah. England or whatever, but hey, yeah. you know what? I, At some point, I praise him for giving it up. I mean, it just, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, by the way, okay, yeah. one more thing, Jay. Um, yes. Redistricting is coming up in 2022, as we know. Uh-huh. I know. And I'm going to make a proposal here. Okay. Because it involves one of your girlfriends. I know, I know, I know. Uh, everybody's jealous of Nancy Pelosi and Dianne Feinstein, I know. But over in St. Paul, we got our friend Rebecca Knocker. Okay, here's what I'm going to propose. I'm going to propose Minneapolis and St. Paul become one city. Hear me out. Okay, okay. And what I want is I want to draw the wards so that Rebecca Knocker runs against Blong Wang. That's what I want, okay? So what we have is that Knocker Wang uh, race. So on election night, we got the, all, the, all the people. Hey, how's that? How's that Knocker Wang <laughs> Result? How's that going? Well, Wang's a little ahead of Knocker right now, but you got you got Knocker went ahead. Now Wang's coming from behind. I mean, what, what a night that could be! Come on. Wow. <laughs> I think we ought to propose that in redistricting I, that we I, I, I we have the Knocker Wang election. He, he's not on the city council at Minneapolis, is he? I thought he was. I don't see how that's possible. Why? Because last time you were saying how he was out in Plymouth running for yeah, but wasn't wasn't county uh, commission. wasn't that county district like really goofily written? Goofily, goofily. Uh, I thought well, Blong Wang was all? in uh, was in Minneapolis. <laughs> <I> got... <laughs> okay, fine. We'll get him to move there. Okay, well, you and I'll donate. And we could have the I can't even I, I can't even remember his real name anymore if I was to look up where his district is. Blog Wang. I'm telling you. You can look up some other Wang if you want, but uh, <laughs> I'll pass. Look, I don't know which Wang you're talking about, but I'm pretty sure it's Blong. Anyhow, look, come on. Wouldn't that be great, though, to have that? Just, you know, Jay Leno used to have the the uh, weddings, you know, the Seymour Butts wedding or something. Yes. It's just, it's just, this would have to be the political equivalent. <laughs> oh, Wang's a little behind. <laughs> all right. Okay, come on. Mm. You, you definitely want to see that. You know it. You people all in the audience know you want to see it. By the way, okay. Jay, on to more serious business right now. We're not going to be laughing anymore. Uh, I mean, well. we'll try to make this entertaining, folks, but I we've teased this show for a while. Yes. This bonding bill. And I know we did one a few years ago, and it was very painful. Remember the whole mm-hmm. New Hope pool getting all that money yep. and, and all that? And henceforth, the song for the uh, Spotify playlist, Community Solutions, uh, music from the playlist, Uh Or music from the podcast, sorry. Uh, Down in a hole, we're digging a hole, we're going into debt. Yeah, we're not going to come out. We forgot the ladders while we were digging a hole. So, we have got, I've got in my my, uh, uh, fingers right here, Jay, 12 pages of the 2020 capital budget. By the way, all figures in thousands. Oh, of course. Yeah, it's not, uh, you know, that's not uh, uh, 3,000 there. That's 3 no. million. Right. Okay, when you're going line by line. I mean, they or... do that to confuse everybody. Well, because they... you've got to do the math in your head and you get sick and tired of it. Well, or they're going to have to bond for more ink. they got to bond for more ink to put all the zeros. Yeah. That's what they have to do. And going through this. Now, first off, first off, l- l- let me say a couple things about this. Yes. This bonding bill was... Um, Fought over, wrangled over, blah, 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 since like April. I mean, you know, um, oh, we're not going to pass a bonding bill until we this. Oh, we're not, blah, 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 blah. I mean, all these veil empty kind of things going back and forth. This bonding bill, $1.9 billion. Okay. Remember, that's a compromise now right. in Republican land. Yes, right. Walls wanted two billion. 
the conservatives gave him 1.9, so that's a victory. I mean, right, you right, ought to feel right. good about it. Well, then he went up to 2.2, and they yeah. didn't cave. No, they didn't cave. Oh. They stuck at 1.9. Oh, I those, mean, those those selfish jerks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those uncaring, unfeeling. Oh. You know, they cut out uh, you know bonding Christmas lights in some city or something like that. Yeah. I mean, look at just the, stole Christmas or the holidays. Yes. I'm sorry, from some you know Amish community in Western Minnesota or something. Um, oh, I'm sorry, it's 1.87 billion. Don't you feel gooder? No, Jay. No. No, I don't either. No. Okay. The okay now, now just just. If you don't know this, I'm just going to back up a second. Bonding bills or capital something or whatever project bills that they call, there's a mm-hmm. fancy name they give it, have to be passed with 60% of the vote in each house. Oh, they had to be super close. Oh, they were very close. I mean... Wow. It, That's it, a hard hurdle to pass. It is. I mean, in the House, mm-hmm. it is uh, 81 votes. Okay. In the Senate, it oh, is... Saying, 81... Uh, 81 for it? Yes, there's 134 representatives. 81 have to support it. And in the. Oh, that's the hurdle. 81 is the hurdle, yeah. Okay. And in the Senate, it is. I probably should have done this beforehand. 41. Okay. Out of 67. Had to be close. It was so close in the House, Mm -hmm. okay, that it took a whole one roll call. To do this, Ooh. passed by a vote of one hundred to thirty-four. Wow! Uh, all seventy-five DFLers supported it. Twenty-five of the fifty-nine Republicans voted for it. Don't and, run again, please. <laughs> well, it's too late now. This well, is before the election. Yeah, but, I know. Um, Next time, <laughs> don't run again. Uh, you'll be glad to know, you people, where's Grove City? Isn't that out by Hutchinson out. or something? Yeah, it might be. You look that up. I will do that real Representative quick. Dean Ertle of Grove R from Grove oh, yeah, City. Dean Ertle. Voice support for the bill. And listen to what he said. Saying that the legislature has a history of passing bonding bills in good times and in bad, during surpluses and deficits, because lawmakers have a responsibility to meet the state's needs. Well, that that's, doesn't mean you should do that's it. That's wonderful to know. We've always done it, so yeah. that's why we did it. Isn't it wonderful to know, though, that in good times and in bad, whether mm. you have the majority or the minority, whether the economy sucks or yeah. whether it's great, whether it's you know raining outside or snowing, you always... Support that deficit spending there, Absolutely. pal. Absolutely. I mean, you you have a, not only that, but you got a responsibility to do it. You know, and, and I think when we say deficit spending, I think that our, our listenership understands that. But I want to make super clear for some of our new listeners or just rather than having people understand that, really feel the pain of that. That is a loan. <laughs> you are going out and people are purchasing your bonds and buying your debt, <laughs> well, right. and you pay them back over a period of time, sometimes 20 to 30 years until those bonds mature, paying them interest on top of the money that that uh, you borrowed them. Well, and look at it like this. We've got, and what, a bor- four, yes. 45... They borrowed bi- us, sorry. Yes. $45 billion biannual budget or mm-hmm. something like that. Okay, this is here's another way to look at that, and you're right, but I'll, I'll add something to that. The $1.87 billion, we're spending it and we don't have it. That We're spending yes. $45 billion. That's mm-hmm. not enough. No. We're going to spend... So we've got a bond on top yeah, of that. Yeah, we're going to spend another almost $2 billion in addition to the one and a half that they spent yeah. in 2018, which, of course, we haven't paid squat back on and, yet. And we've talked about this so many times. Bonding is a hidden tax because you pay it in arrears. Uh, yeah. Where, why didn't they just tack another $2 billion onto their budget and and let that or, be it? Because you, your taxes would go up noticeably. Or with, find the $2 know, billion like, yeah. you know, somewhere else. I mean, yeah. that's the thing. So, yeah, th- this joint is uh, off of 12, just past <laughs> Litchfield. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, north northwest of. No offense on Grove City. Hutchinson. We're not picking on you. 
Uh, I love this. I love how they talk about how many tax cuts are in this. Um, uh, zero? Well, there aren't because you can't pay for a tax cut with borrowing. That's like yeah. saying, Jay, I'm going to I'm going to pay you, you know, $500 to paint my house and mm-hmm. to get the money, I'm going to I'm going to take out a loan and pay the bank back. Yeah. It's I mean, that's that's not I'm not creating economic it's it's I'm not creating economic dollars. Yeah. Okay. I'm borrowing, transferring that money to somebody else, paying it back over time. Yeah. So it's it's absurd. But um, several tax provisions are part of the uh, package, mm. including a tax break meant to help farmers and small business owners. It would increase the deduction on. Like kind exchanges. So why is that in a bonding bill? I don't know. But how is a tax deduction in a bonding bill? I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't get that either. Um, I don't even know what, what that means, to be honest with you. Um, it also includes a supplemental state government spending bill that got another $31 million in the general fund uh, for next year that got absolutely no coverage whatsoever, so another $31 million on top of everything. Um, <clears throat> you know, there's a bunch of quotes here from people I don't even want to read them. <laughs> I mean, it just... I mean, it just pains me to... Um, the Senate... I, let's go over to the Senate real quick. It was tough, man. It was, it was really close. I mean, I didn't think they were going to find the 41 votes. Yes. Instead of finding 41, they found 64. Oh. 64... To three. <clears throat> so, Jay, two things. One, mm. and by the way, the Republicans did such a great job that Senator Gazelka and Representative Doubt just got reelected to their posts. Just for wonderful, wonderful things that they did here. Yes. I would like to ask any Republican who voted. Look, the only thing I can think of is that they're all bought off. You know, they're all bought off by something in here. Mm-hmm. You know, like I said, they're, 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 the, the state's bonding for Christmas lights in downtown Grove City, <laughs> or, you know, they're handing yeah. out free hemorrhoid cream at the local, <laughs> ah! the local uh, uh, you yes. know, old folks home, whatever. It, it, it doesn't matter. Somehow, what is the... What is the case? If you're a conservative, and I, it, we seem to have differing definitions of what that means nowadays. Right. What do you say? How do you walk into a meeting, a Tea Party meeting or a, a executive committee meeting, and try to make the case that you are for limited government when you vote for something like this? I mean, By I, not talking about it. Yeah, That's exactly. How, it. How, many, how many voted for this bonding bill, then put it all over their Facebook yeah. page, all over their website, Oh, check out what we just did. So great for Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Uh, this huge uh, jobs bill. I think that's what uh, yeah. the Fonz was calling it. Oh, boy. Arthur Fonzarelli yeah. Winkler the third Jr., who I blame for everything that happens in yes. St. Paul. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is a jobs bill. I mean, look, higher education prepares people to go get jobs. The Minnesota state system got $91 million, and the University of Minnesota's bonding total was $75 million for overcharging the students they already have. Yeah, and now get, wait, get ready till that tuition starts paying interest on yeah. um, it. Yeah. It, look, and we'll go through some of the... You know, here's another thing, too. How do you, how do you make the case... How does something get in a bonding bill and get out of a bonding bill? I mean, that's what I'd like to know. You know what I'm saying? How does that happen? How does something, uh, you know, how how does something so, I mean, let me just give you an example of something in here. City of Mankato, Riverbank Restoration. I don't know what that means. I don't know Mm. what that project is. Don't care. (laughs) 7.2 Seven point two million dollars. Yes, for that. Those are jobs. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> the state's going to go in debt. Yes, to pay for a riverbank restoration project, Pine County, the Jim Oberstar Trail. Oh, goodness, 
Six hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I had to trail. put up with Jim Overstar for way too many years growing up in Duluth. Would you like to be back there though? No. Now that Stauber's there, I mean, it, come on, it's got to be better. Yeah. City of Winona, Winona Judd, Riverfront Trail, two million dollars for a wow. trail. Mm. I mean, you know, we can go through and go through and go through and go through and go through. Public safety, the city of a Chisholm. Uh huh. Public safety. Up on the iron, up on the iron range. Yeah. yeah. Two million dollars for a public safety facility. Now, how is that a statewide? How does anyone even make the case that that's a statewide responsibility? Yeah, I don't think you can yeah, up there. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, you know if Amber Fry, excuse me, Jacob Fry, you know if he's happy with it over in Minneapolis, that it's yeah. got to be bad. The right. city of Minneapolis received $85 million for local projects. Okay, let me read that again. $85 million for local projects. I don't know what website <laughs> this is. It says bowreel.org. Hmm. Um this is a huge win for the city, said Amber Fry. <laughs> Included in the bill, there are top bonding priorities of the Upper Harbor Terminal, the Central Storm Tunnel, and the Emergency Operation Operations and Training Facilities. Not to be outdone, Jay. Yes. Old Melvin Cata over in St. Paul is pleased as well that his $52 million request for a new 3rd Street Kellogg Bridge was also included. Oh, criminy. Why? <laughs> the Metropolitan Council receives $55 million to promote bus rapid transit. Hmm. Minnesota Zoo receives $13 million for asset preservation and $29 million towards a new emergency operations center. What, what is this emergency operations center? And why, can, why does a building have to cost $30 million bucks? Is there just, you know, mm -hmm. there any, you think uh, uh, some conservative areas like Becker, Minnesota. No, 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 no. Mm. Mayor Tracy Bertram. I don't know if that's a he or she, says the improvements made in the bonding bill will benefit more than just one business. Boy, I hope so. <laughs> that would be a good thing. Yeah, because um, Google has proposed a data storage center uh, up in Becker. I don't know why they need any kind of break to do that, mm -hmm. uh, but it's you'll be glad to know the mayor of Becker. It's not just specific to Google; mm -hmm. it's specific to a large portion of land where we have Google Google as a hopeful tenant of. Well, you know what? He, I Earth to people in Minnesota. Okay, and when I think of Google, just just forget for a minute. If you want businesses to come here, yes. The way to do that is not to pick out winners and losers, not to give some businesses something. Of course, it's always the big business that gets something for free. Mm -hmm. The way to do that is to create that atmosphere so that all businesses get the same playing field. Right. Okay? So the, the, may, the, the mayor of Becker, I think, needs to go back to microeconomics or macroeconomics back in, oh, I don't know, nursery school, and figure that out. Mm -hmm. This is not a win in any way, shape, or form. This is crony capitalism. That's what oh, that is. Oh, absolutely. And making everybody in the state pay for it. Uh, pay for it plus interest. Plus interest, you know, yes. The, the, you know what I'd like to see? I'd like to see these numbers plus the interest on it. Yes. That's what I'd really like to see. Isn't yeah, that the this real, is just the principle. Isn't that the real price tag for all of us? This is just the principle. And, you know, uh, to, to put it in perspective, what it was uh, when Crystal was talking about doing the public works building and the old council wanted to bond it, it was going to be, what, $7 million more than what? I think it was 14 in cash, 20 in 
Yeah. Bonds. Okay, so six million more. It depends how long you take a bond out right, for. It. Right, There's Some nuances there. And and the bond rates were a little bit higher back then than they are now. But I mean, still, you're looking at millions of dollars in some of these cases. Uh, absolutely. And it's line item after line item after line item after line item after line item. I'm only on page five. After uh, four hundred. Uh, 63 lines in this, but they're not all... Uh, it's what, probably about 350. 426 total, lines, looks I, like. I love some of the... Cat- well, I don't love them. Yeah. Some of the- By the way, do you know that they have all different funds when it comes to this? Hmm. They're not all general obligation bonds backed by the full oh, really? faith and credit of your government, uh, their ability to tax the hell out of you. No, they've got several different... I don't know what the differences are. Um, I was trying to figure this out, but I couldn't. Uh, user finances, which is general obligation bonds paid back by users rather than the general fund. There is a transportation fund. They have their own bonding authority. So do trunk highways. Mm-hmm. You know, like Highway 55 would be a trunk highway. Um, appropriation bonds, you got to love this, general fund bonds not secured by the full faith. Boy, that's got to be great for municipal investors, I'll oh, tell yeah. you that. So there's all different, once again, we have the the uh, bags full of money or the, the uh, uh, all the different places mm-hmm. where money comes. You know, it's not, yeah. not one, the buckets of money, that's what we have. We don't have just one yeah. spot, we got buckets of money. Uh, just about every city, it looks like, is getting some, even my hometown. Uh-oh, what's yeah. Proctor getting? Um, yeah, that's it. Um, Proctor, Minnesota. They, they getting, getting color TV now? We're getting or what a salt they? shed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? In two Woo! years, two years, you can lobby for a pepper shed. <laughs> <laughs> well, they only gave you one of the two. Yeah, you got to wait for the second one. Right? Uh, could I get Lowry's instead of pepper? <laughs> could I get season a seasoned salt shed? <laughs> Uh, you're terrible. <laughs> what are you getting? What's that run us? What's that cost uh, us? Looks like uh, 500 G's. 500 G's for a shed? Yeah. Okay. Now, now here's a perfect example of, a, of abuse of this. Yeah. Local road named grants. Now, here's what I want to know. Yes. Because I don't think any local road should be paid for by state taxpayers. I mean, I know it comes from tax dollars somewhere. Yeah. But again, how do you decide? The, the, again, Jay, this is like bailouts or anything else. How do you decide who gets money and who doesn't? This is where the back slapping, the, the uh, political smoke-filled room stuff, this is where this comes in. Both parties mm-hmm. are equally guilty of it. Where it's okay, well, horse right. trade, you know. Well, here's what we know. The people who are going to vote for this will just submit stuff for it, whatever whatever they really need in their district. Exactly. This it. stuff just gets slipped in. Uh-huh. You know what? It's going to pass. So I'll just I'll throw in, like I said, I'll throw in Christmas lights at, you know, on the downtown. You know, we got yeah. a street lamp not working. I'll throw that in. We want to put up, you know, Hazard County wants to put up the first traffic light. They'll throw that in. You know, uh, you know, we got beaches that need some cleaning up over here. Yeah. We'll, we'll put that in, and we'll, yeah. we'll we'll ask for five times as much money as we need because yeah. we might want to build a shed there, a salt shed mm-hmm. uh, there at some point, and a pepper shed. Right. I mean, you know, it, it is so. Corrupt, and you know what? What I'd like to see is I'd like to hear. I'd like to see this debated. I'd like to hear every single one, whoever put this in, explain to everybody why it's my responsibility to pay for a road for Morningside Drive in McLeod County. Mm-hmm. I'd like to know, you know, why that is. City of Richfield, Seventy Seventh Street underpass. Six million bucks. Now, to put that, put six million dollars in perspective, six million dollars paid for an entire street project in Crystal. Mm-hmm. And they needed for one underpass. Yeah. Scenic wow. highway reconstruction in Sibley County. Well, what's Sibley County's contribution? I don't. And maybe they are. Still, yeah, they're it, they're paying fifty cents. Well, the is rest it, of us is it our responsibility well, to pay for. You it. know. Um, it, it just once one gets in, and once one right. rep sees that that 
you know, the state's paying for this road. What what is what did he or she do? Try to get it into the next bill. Yeah. So this just this is just never ending. Well, I think that's it. It starts with the people who you're you already got, you know, and you don't need to buy them off. They're already in. Hey, here's the thanks for being in. What do you need in your district? Uh, hey, you want to get reelected? Then uh, we move into yeah. Bring bring the bacon home. You know, somehow yeah. somewhere along the way, the definition of of doing something for your district is taking other people's tax dollars and bringing it there. Yes. And yeah, you I don't know, know when that started, but then it, we move to the people who are more difficult, and you have to really figure out what they want and put on some pressure and learn. Okay, how to negotiate? We're going to start here, and we'll yeah. or or we'll give you five million more. Maybe we'll throw in an Olympic-sized pool. Or <laughs> yes. it's you know you want to be on this committee next time. We need your vote. You want to be on bubble? We all know that goes mm-hmm. on. You know, you want to be uh, you want money for your yeah. support for your reelection next time. You know, I mean, there's there's yeah. that kind of stuff that goes on too. One million dollars for Morningside Drive in McLeod County, out in Glen Gruhagen territory. Yeah, he, he's another guy who voted for it. <sighs> um, multimodal programs and grants, safe routes to school, oh, infrastructure. Our favorite. Three million bucks of bonding. Yes. To. Uh, bike paths and walking paths and Grassy Point Bridge. <laughs> what? <laughs> Another three million bucks. Uh, Minnesota Rail Service Improvement Program. Another four million. Mm-hmm. But this whole local roads. I mean, Anoka County, mm-hmm. Dakota. It doesn't matter where it's blue or red. Anoka County, Dakota County, City of Golden Valley, City of Maple Grove, City of Oak Park Heights. Ramsey County, Sartell, street improvements, five and a half million dollars for street improvements in Sartell, Minnesota. Yes. Right north there of St. Cloud there. What else we got here? What mm. else we got? Department of Corrections. It's not enough that our tax dollars go to keep these people behind bars. We've got to have forty-four million dollars going to the Department of Corrections in deficit in bonding. Yes. St. Cloud Fire Suppression. What's fire suppression? Um, I don't know. I guess... Uh, <laughs> Same thing over in Stillwater. Su- suppress a fire, that's uh, putting it out, isn't it? That's just fancy just talk. Pans on the grease or whatever it is here. <laughs> oh, boy, Jay. It's fancy talk. We got, some, we got some nasty stuff, though, here. Yes. Met Council. Oh, Let's break this rainy. down. First off, they got $55 million for BRT, not BLT, BRT. Yeah. Inflow and infiltration grant programs, $5 million bucks. Regional parks and trails, $5 million bucks. No, 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 remember, this is in bonding. This is yes. not in total tax dollars. Right. Okay. Grants to political subdivisions. Hmm. The Minneapolis Park and Rec Board alone gets $3 million. Yes. $3 million. Uh, Dakota County. Is that Car- Park and Rec, like W-R-E-C-K? Yeah. <laughs> W-K-R-P Rec? I don't know what it is, but okay. it's, it's bad. You got the Como Three Rivers Park District. $5 million more. Wow. White Bear Lake Trail Links. Three point six million. That's not L Y N X, right? That's, no, this okay. is like sausage links. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. It's not good no matter. Yeah. City of Floodwood stabilization ponds. That's uh, two million for that. Uh, how are you gonna? It, it's already flooded. Yeah, <laughs> it's already flooded in Floodwood. Where are you stabilizing? We're gonna bring the day? bags now. Now we're gonna bring the bags. Get the sandbags up there, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh boy. Yes. Grants to political subdivisions. Wow. There's just pages after page after page after page of this stuff. Yeah. I mean, you know, um, to sit here and point out the the worst of it is pretty difficult. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, Pipestone County, $250,000, which doesn't sound like much, for a dental facility. Yeah. Well, why doesn't the dental facility pay for their own building? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I mean, you, I mean know, if you're, you want to open up Mel's Barbershop, 
Nobody you, gives them mm-mm. hundreds of thousands of dollars to do no. it. Um, City of St. Paul, the Hamung Plaza. Yes. 500000 City of St. Paul, Victoria Theater, $1 million. Another dental facility in Wright County. Boy, they must have more tooth problems out there because that's <laughs> $1.4 million bucks yeah. for that. Uh, City of St. Cloud, they have a municipal athletic complex, $10 million bucks. Oh, that's nothing. Um, it's not? It was the Department of Transportation. They're doing rail grade separations. $110 million. How <laughs> you like that? I don't. Eden Prairie Truck Station, $15.2 million. <laughs> Mendota Heights Truck Station, $10 million, five, uh, Yeah, 500000 yeah, What is all this? What is all this? Water project stuff. I mean, does anybody pay for their own water? Again, some some cities get this stuff given to them. Mm-hmm. Some cities have to pay for their own. But I right. mean, I'm going through this here. Albertville, Arden Hills, Aurora, Austin, Bemidji, Buell. I don't know where that is. Cal- 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 Califragilistic. <laughs> Whatever that is. Yeah. Chisago. Deer River, East Itasca, uh, whatever, uh, Foley, uh, Melrose Place, Mendota, Newport, uh, Royalton, South Haven, Two Harbors. They all get this water infrastructure. The total price tag, $269 million bucks for all this. Yeah. So, again... Why do some cities get this given to them, and some cities have to build their own? Yeah. I mean, well, how is that fair? You know, Deer River, that's up by you know the Grand Rapids yep. area. And, but you've got uh, Grand Rapids, you've got Hill City, you've got uh, Marcel, oh, you've acid. got Coleraine, Bovee. Yeah. I, why don't they get a free <laughs> water yeah. treatment thing? You know, I mean, th- but this, is, this will be the, the uh, keeping up with the Joneses. So and so got an amphitheater, so we're gonna get one too. Yeah. So and so got a hockey rink, so we're gonna get one too. So and so got you know uh, walking and biking paths, yeah, free we're tennis courts, pickleball. I don't know. It <laughs> pickleball, matter. pickleball court. So we're gonna get one. <laughs> we're gonna go pressure our rep. And by the way, I mean, um, I'll get to this in a second. But there were a lot of outside groups getting together. And you supporting this say. stuff. Department of Transportation, Trunk Highway Bonds, which I guess have their own mm. 300 million bucks. Goodness. Flood mitigation. Uh, you mentioned the Eden Prairie Truck Station. Um, you know, grade separators. I mean, $300 million for this? Mm. Wow. I mean, look, I mean, do, do, the, do they. You know, throw money around like... like. Uh... You know, I think they might. I think they might take this money, r- spread it out all over the dais there in the city council chambers, and just roll in it for a bit. I think that's probably part of what goes on. They get this in, and they just spread it out and have some fun. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just... Uh, I mean, it, I, it... I don't know if I'd do it, but maybe you would. Well, but, but you know... Yeah. My question becomes, I mean, it's like every year it becomes more and more and more and more money. I mean, yes. every single year. And it, it, it gets to a point where, you know, at what point are, are we going to just stop and go, wait a second. Just because we spent a billion dollars last time doesn't mean we should do that again. Right. You know, wh- why does it have to keep going up and up and up and up and up? You know, and I think again, that's where all the the pork comes in, is because somebody sets an arbitrary goal of mm-hmm. of well, we got to spend two billion. Why? Well, because that's what we did last time. Okay, <laughs> so I mean, you know, uh, I can't find the article I was going to read, but the, like the, you know, all the chamber of commerces and all that stuff were all in on this. All the transit people. Uh, all were backing this. I mean, that, the what trans is that? people were backing this? Tra- transit. Oh, trans. okay. Uh, 
Um, you know, just support was yes. was pretty much everywhere. Uh, you know, uh, and and if this is going to pass sixty four to three and one hundred to thirty four. What was the point of dragging it? I just want a strategic question. Yeah. What was the point of? I got a couple theories on what the point was about dragging this out for so long. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I, they didn't want anybody to see what was in it before the election, obviously. Or before somebody could run in a primary. Right. You pass this in April, mm -hmm. you piss somebody off to the point where you pass it in mid-October when people have already voted. Some people yeah. have already voted. Don't forget that. Right. You know, some people aren't going to hear about it because they're looking, watching the debates or they're you know yeah. they're they're involved in another campaign everybody or is focused on the presidential election yeah anyways, or, you know it is. Uh, so i mean or the senate elections or whatever there are 200 elections going on yeah so they're not paying attention to it <laughs> and you just blow through this in a special session and i want to know i want to know what republicans got for this i mean what where, where did the democrats do any compromising here see the art of a compromise is when you give a little and they give a little. You give a little and they give a little. What I see is Republicans going from uh, wherever they were to this and the Democrats moving like four centimeters. Yeah, maybe. And I mean, what... what I just... I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it either. I... Uh... There's just so much crap in it, you know, and but you know what? They can all say they got blah 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 in their in their district, and then unfortunately, that's probably be named after them at some point. Yeah, <laughs> I wonder though. Like in these red districts, do they really go back and say, "Hey, look what I got, you guys! Look what you know, we got all these millions of dollars in the bonding bill." Because I would expect they would try to hide that, and that they wouldn't be very out in the open about it. But but nobody calls them on it. I mean, ultimately, right. somebody has to call them on it and just say, "Look, this is." This is, and, and you know what? If you're going to do a bonding bill, if you're going to, and look, I, I'm not a guy who who thinks bond is you know an evil four letter word, and you can never, ever, ever, ever. My my whole deal with bonding is that I want to change the mentality. I want to change the well. Well, why did we bond for this project? Well, because that's what we did last time. Right. Oh, okay. Why are we bonding? Well, that's because what staff recommends. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, that's the kind of crap that I want gone. Right. If your bonding isn't at zero, okay, I think you should work toward it. Yeah. Whether you ever get there or you get as close to it as you can. I don't think, I don't think a state or a city or a county can plan for absolutely everything. That's just me. But, right. But, um, again, a state bonding bill should have state purposes in it yes it should i mean i don't even know what those would be come to think of it, because i don't really see any in here right i mean even like these universities i mean you know if they're going to get free stuff yeah why can't they lower tuition then they should you know if you're gonna get free science buildings yeah. and free gymnasiums on our backs okay mm -hmm. why don't you lower the cost for students to go there right University's not paying. I want to. Here's what I'd like to know too. What are they paying in lobbying? I'd like to know how much. I'd like to know how much the University of Minnesota system because that's a lot of schools. Mm -hmm, it sure I is. I want to know what they pay in lobbying. Yeah. Well, they got an office down at at the along with the teachers union down in St. Paul. They they got to be paying a lot of money to lobby. You know, pay, paying money to get money is mm -hmm. what they're doing. So, yes. I mean, you know, it's just, if you're going to get, if, if all these universities are going to get free stuff, they ought to be offsetting that somehow and not just, just I don't know what, I mean. I, it, it's, yeah. I, and I'm sorry. It's obscene. And I'm sorry. Local streets, we already have a fund for yes. local streets at the state. It's called the municipal, uh, the, oh, I can't remember what it's called, but there's a municipal street fund. Yes. Uh, and there's, our, there's a county one. And then we, they bond on top of it. It's like all these counties and cities are already getting money from state tax Right. So then they need bonding on top of it? I don't know. I, 
Nobody's willing to say no. Yeah. Nobody's willing to say this project is more important than this project. Yeah. They just want everything. Right. You know, we can't say no to a trail and use that money to 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 fix our county road. Oh, no, no, we've no. got to we've got to. We've got to fix neither and then lobby the state to get bonding money so we, we get it for free. And yeah. how much money is lost, Jay? And we've talked about this 185 episodes. We've probably mentioned this in half of them. How much <laughs> money is lost between sending my money to St. Paul mm-hmm. and having them, them take money out of it for their administration and their child care and whatever else yeah. and then sending it back to cities with interest? Oh, yeah. I mean, where's the... If I send $1, what am I getting back out of that? 30 cents? Yeah, that's pretty so, I mean, it's It's not much. You know, and, and I might be able to... You know, it... <laughs> I'm trying to find an example where it would be okay. I mean, maybe, like, if you're trying to replace uh, part of uh, Highway 210 in between Motley and Pillager... You know, may, may, maybe that makes sense to have some state funds, you know. Pick, state pick funds, but right. it's bonding. Right. There's already state funds there going be. to it. There should be, yeah. But see, I think this is also, when you talk about the state funds, it's also a function of not setting priorities. Everybody right. wants the money. So we're going to find a way to make everybody happy. These people get these funds, then we're going to bond the rest. Yeah. You know, it's it's... So, but you're right. I mean, yeah, okay, statewide purpose, state highway is a mm-hmm. state responsibility. But then it comes, well, where's my gas tax money going? Right. Where's my VAT tax going? Oh, that's where's simple. My... It, Minneapolis. Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, they're putting in uh, more bike lanes. And, going to transit. And, and going putting to the that. speed remember limit from 25 down to 20. Remember, there's constitutional requirements, too, on like the vehicle sales tax and mm-hmm. on your tabs. There's X amount and then... Rural Minnesota wants this, and the cities want that. Yep. I know I'm oversimplifying it a little bit, but you know when it comes to bonding, it's like okay, if 40 percent of that's already going to transit, how in the world can they have left? Why don't they just say, look, we're already giving you enough. We're not gonna we're not gonna bond to pay for a bike path in in Winona. Yeah, you're just gonna have to, you know, either wait your turn with the transit money or pay for it yourself Mm -hmm. you know there's just needs and wants we have just there is just no distinction between that in st paul or washington or most city halls there is just no thinking that goes along with Mm -hmm. that it's like oh we can get money to do that great let's take that so that we don't have to pay for it ourselves and it it's a disease (laughs) Oh, my goodness. I mean, so in two years, when we're doing this show again in two years, yeah. there will be a bonding bill in 2022. Uh-huh. I mean, what's that going to be? $10 billion? $100 billion? I mean, why not? What, what, what difference does it make? I well. mean, if you bond $1 billion, you'll bond 2 If you bond 2 you'll bond 4 yeah. Don't tell me. This, if this passes 64 to 3, what wouldn't pass? $100 billion? <laughs> yeah. $500 billion? I mean, what wouldn't? Right. I mean, so, and it was interesting, too, because I remember when this, this, this past, uh, sometime in mid-October, I was scouring mm-hmm. Twitter feeds to see, even the DFLers weren't bragging about this. Right. You know, nobody, everybody was quiet. So it was like, it was like they all got together and said, okay, let's pass this, let's all just shut up about it. Yeah. Yeah, we're not going to. I mean, there was there was like two people mm-hmm. who said some from like Minneapolis who said something, and I mean nobody else. Everybody else was quiet. I didn't see challengers ripping it, either. Yeah, you know, people who were running against somebody going, "Hey, what the hell was this?" You know, I mean, there was. But I think I think it was all passed now to get away with it, just so they could get away with it. And once the election passes, we'll all forget about it. Yeah, you and I won't, but we'll all forget. No. All forget about. We got to have. You know, I hate to say this, but I think we've got to have either somebody on the show sometime who voted for this. Uh, they might not want to come on, <laughs> or somebody voted against it, and and go through how this process works. So I'd like to know from start to who puts four hundred things. How do four hundred things get into this bill? 
Who's responsible for writing them all in? Right. Maybe we'll get Steve Driscowski or, or Calvin Barr or somebody like yeah. that to come in. It's an open invitation to, to Steve or Cal. Yeah. Or Jeremy Munson or mm-hmm. Mary Franson or somebody like that. All people I know voted against this. Let's just. Yeah. I, it's an open invitation for any of you to come in and, and discuss what. I'd like to know. You know how, how what is this process and how does you know how does you know something like this how do these things get in here? I mean, how does the Carver County Waconia Regional Park water development get into a bonding bill? Yeah, you know, um, they may not even know. <laughs> Be like, I ain't voting for it no matter what's in there. You yeah. can put a little pink bunny in there, and I'm not voting for it. So I mean. It, could be that, but I mean, you know, just an open invite. And hey, look, if anybody wants to come in and debate us on it, you know, you're you're welcome to do it too. Yeah, I mean, you know, Jason might kill you, but I won't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I have such a violent streak. <laughs> <laughs> well, figuratively, speaking. I'm the calmest rageaholic, you know. You may be, you may be. I'm certainly not. So we'll. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, we we apologize for another. Uh, by the way, um, I have to say something else. You know, this is the time of year, and I'm sure we'll touch on this in December, where we get those get those tax things out there. Mm-hmm. St. Paul is doing a zero percent increase. Can you believe that? Uh-huh. They can do zero percent this year. Why can't they do it any other year? Right. Why is that not possible? They really can do zero. Uh, that's what I thought. I saw. Wow. I taught. I taught. Last year, there were, like, more than New Hope, weren't they? Oh, yeah. Remember uh, uh, Dai Tao and yeah. uh, uh, all the people right. who We didn't get enough. Yeah. <laughs> they were upset about yeah. it. Yeah. I would have put much more in it. Yeah. I that's right. What that. was that? That's uh, Hey Big Spender. I want to say it's episode, like, 130-something, if you go to Spotfly. Yeah. And, or not Spotfly. Where do we go? Yeah, we got them out on Spotify, too. Oh, okay. You too. Or just go onto your big old phone and go to your podcast app and look up the Community Solutions Podcast. That's right. It's there. Absolutely. All right, Jay. Another show in the books. We can't leave the show without the sign-off sermon. Oh, boy. Community Solutions, once again, presents The Suffering of Succotash. The Roddy of Piper. The Fair to Flare. Styling and profiling. The Chick Magnet. Ah. <laughs> Jet flying. Limousine riding. The Master of Disaster. The King of Sting. Ladies and gentlemen, with the sign off sermon, once again, we present Jason Bradley. Oh, is that me? Okay. Are there, is there another Jason Bradley in the room? <laughs> you know, you said something that piqued my interest. Yeah, and by the way, I just find it funny that there's a preacher out there named Oral. I just wanted to say that, okay, this week. Well, <laughs> that is occuponymous, right? That have eight legs. <laughs> you know, when you call me a chick magnet, it's true, except I'm the end that repels the other side. That's how that works. I thought they were running to you. I guess they were... (laughs) Yeah, they're running away. (laughs) That's true. Oh, boy. Are we in some trouble, Minnesota? Why? Because we got two parties that do the same dang thing. And what are we going to do about it? You know, it, these people go to St. Paul and with our blessing, and then we find out that they spent almost $2 million on a bunch of stuff. That, Two billion. A billion, sorry. Yeah, um, you're only uh, off by uh, uh, 190. <laughs> <laughs> only. It's late. Leave me alone. <laughs> yes. $2 billion of our money plus interest. That's going to be a lot of interest that we're going to be paying off for a lot of years. And here we are going into this new season already behind the eight ball. And we're sitting here. We don't know what end is up. We don't know who our president is. We don't know what is happening if we're, if we're Republicans are going to control the Senate or Democrats are going to control everything. If they do, you better look out because they're coming for you. 
I don't say that to scare you. I say that because that's what they said they're going to do. Take their word for it. Why would they lie? They lie about a whole bunch of stuff. But stuff like that, they tell you what they're going to do. Oh, yes. They tell you that they are coming for your freedoms. They tell you that they're coming for your money. They tell you they're coming for your privilege. Privilege. Let me tell you, what is privileged about paying billions of dollars in taxes, billions of dollars in bonding, billions of dollars in interest? What is, what is so privileged about that? What's privileged about having to work two, three, four jobs, having both parents work? What's privileged about that? What is privileged about getting censored on social media? What is privileged about having our news articles drummed out of, of the press? What, what is privileged about that stuff? We are in a time here, Minnesota, where we need to stand up and we need to do what is right. I'm sick and tired of listening to these people tell us what they're going to do and having everybody so busy off on their own lives they either don't care or they're just not paying attention. This is too important for us to stay asleep. Because if we lose freedom now, we're going to lose it forever. We're not Europe. We don't do what they do. We don't act like they act. We try to even make them into things that they're not. And try to say, we want to be like Sweden. We want to be like Denmark. They're not socialist countries. Now, they got a heck of a welfare system, but they are not socialist countries. But yet, we seem to be so bent on Marxism here. And we take, we take that cultural Marxism, that critical race theory, imported into our country. And uh, we don't pay any attention to it. We don't care. It doesn't bother us. And yet, these people have such a nerve to sit up there and say, Oh, why are you against other races? Why are you so racist? It's not about us being racist. You put out a good cultural sensitivity training that's not all full of Marxism. And nobody that would say that they don't want a piece of that. We should all learn to get together better. We should all learn to love each other more. But any time that you start to tear one group down so you can build another up, count me out. I don't want none of it. So what are you going to do? That seems to be the question I ask every week. I ain't found an answer yet. And so that's why I keep asking. Because there are a whole lot of us. Seven mil 70, 70 million people in this nation that voted for freedom. The 72, I think. Is 72 the million in this country that voted for freedom. That voted no on Marxism. Now the problem you got is there's about 74, 75 that, uh, that decided they were okay with it. Now last I checked, that's not American. Last I checked, that's uh, maybe Chinese, maybe Russian, maybe North Korean. Mixing a little Pol Pot for good measure down there in Cambodia, a little Venezuela. That, that's not American. As Americans, we're allowed to share our mind no matter what. As Americans, we are allowed to talk about things openly and honestly or dishonestly. Now, shame on you if you're being dishonest. But we have that right. And we have the ability to protect our lives. A freedom of the press. We have... 
the freedom to worship as we choose, to assemble, to associate with whomever we please. The right to a free trial. The right to not have government all up in our business. The government does not get to break those laws. Let me tell you something. A lot of times they will say, uh, maybe I said this already in one of these, but Romans 13, they talk a lot about no, you, honoring you, the government. You talked about Romans 10, it's okay. No. Romans 13 in the Bible, they talk about honoring government. But what it says is honor the governing authorities. Now, for us, that does mean to follow the laws. But let me tell you, for people who are in government, the governing authority is the Constitution of the United States. And if you are breaking the Constitution of the United States, if you are writing laws that do not follow the Constitution of the United States, you are passing unjust laws. You are passing immoral laws. And you need to stop. And that's what I need your help with. Minnesota. We got some people in St. Paul, in our city councils, out of Washington, in our school districts, in our counties, that are passing immoral laws. Yeah, call me an ideologue. I, I don't care much. It's fine. But you know what? If you don't have ideals, if you don't have principles, then you really have no place in government. Because as Benjamin Franklin said, no, sorry, as John Adams said, our government was made for, our constitution was made for a moral people and is not fit for that of any other. So that's why you see you have two groups of people. You have a moral group of people that are protecting the constitution. You have an immoral group of people trying to tear it down. That's what it's come to. It is a battle between good and evil. And I'm not calling all those people evil, but I'm saying there's a battle that we don't see and we don't understand. And we better be ready to enter into that battle. Because if we're not, we have nothing to complain about so I take this back to bonding here we have government spending two billion dollars two billion dollars of your money plus interest did you elect them to do that did you say hey here's a blank check in my name have at it. Have at it. I just want to... I want to be along for the ride and, and feel good because I elected you. No, we don't want that. We want some control over our finances. We want some control over the laws that are being passed. We want to be able to tell this governor the walls that stole Christmas. We want to tell him to take a hike. We want to tell him to leave our restaurants alone, leave our churches alone, leave our retail outlets alone, leave our families alone. We don't want to hear from you closing everything up, telling us that you want $2.2 .2 billion of our money, that it's not even enough. Well, we're haggling over $2 billion and one point not yet. It's not enough, and it's not going to be enough, and there's going to be more. You're going to return to the table like the starving little orphan. I want some more. I want some more. Well, let me tell you, I think there's a lot of us here in this state that are getting sick and tired of it. So, Minnesota, this is where you come in. Are you tired of it? Are you tired of it, or are you going to let it all go by the wayside? You're going to open up your wallet, spill it all out on the table, and shove it over to, to Governor Grabby. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe. I ain't doing it. And I encourage all of y'all, who aren't going to do it either, to join us. Now, one way you can do that is take information like what we've spread in this podcast. You're not going to find another breakdown of the budget like this. Nobody else is going to talk about it. Spread it around, all your friends, all your family. Let them be as amazed. It's kind of like a freak show you'd get at the circus. 
You know, you rate, you subscribe on YouTube, you, you, you know, comment. Let's get the conversation going. Let's, let's get some energy behind this movement. Let's not just take in information and then, and then complain on Twitter. Let's get some energy behind this movement. Let's get things moving in the right direction. That's part of a movement. It doesn't sit still. A movement has energy. A movement is moving. It's going somewhere. So I want you to get a hold of us. I want you to get a hold of us and say, I'm in. And you can do that at C-O-M-M Solutions, M-N at gmail.com. That is C-O-M-M Solutions, M-N at gmail.com. We would love to help you in the situation that you're in. We'd love to talk about your city on air if something screwy is going on. Because that's what we're here. We are focused. No matter who wins this presidential election, believe me, I, I care who wins. But no matter who wins, we're in this to build this right from the bottom, bottom up. And we're going to tear down every vestige of Marxism and progressivism that has lodged itself firmly into the foundation of our governmental system. The time is now. We've been here. We've helped a whole bunch of people win office at the local level. Maybe it's your turn. Think about that. You let us know. Otherwise, you know what you got to do. Let's get the word out. Let's, let's get our feet moving. Let's come up with things that are going to make the Democrats, the, the, especially the Marxist ones, pull their hair out in clumps. We've got to be their worst nightmare. So, guys, it's just us. Who's with us? We are going to come back just another week from now with a whole new podcast. Mm hmm. So, Minnesota. You know, this is your chance. We're not going to have another chance. If we screw this up, we're done. After all, what Reagan said, you lose, you lose liberty, you, you know, you lose it within your generation and it's gone. It gone. So, you know what you got to do. We love you, Minnesota. But now it's your turn to get to work. I get too caught up.